Who has a gun? I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. Just want to experience something else than a black man. Move on, move on. Like a, a horse with blinkers. On. Honestly, say, I was about to have Corrupt. sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. <laughs> My name is Jeremy. I am a student at UCT. I'm 23 years old. I live in Mowbray and I study uh, international relations. I'm doing an honours in international relations. And I've been in South Africa for about three and a half years and most of that has been Cape Town. Hi there, my name is Megan Oberholzer. I'm 22 years old and I'm a third year acting student at ACT Cape Town, the Film Acting Academy. Hi, my name is Gavin, I'm 22 years old. I'm originally from Durban. I've been staying in Cape Town for the past two years and I study a BCom part-time. Hi, I'm Christine Offerman. I'm 22 years old. I study journalism at UCT and now I'm just floating around. Hi, my name is Laura. Um, I'm 20 years old. I'm a fine arts student at UCT um, and I've been in Cape Town. Um, I've lived here for five years, but I lived in Johannesburg originally. I always wonder how different South Africa is in terms of what other people are going through around the world. I think there's, you know, places, I mean, where there's North America, or where, I mean, Europe or anywhere else, where there's as much instability or not. And it's always interesting to think about Cape Town as maybe a microcosm of, of where, what else is happening in the world. And it's always interesting to think, like, coming back here, it does seem a little more stable, even if it's going through the pits. It does seem a lot more stable than maybe some other places. So. Yeah, I mean, I've spoken to a lot of people who have gone abroad and stayed there for a few years. and. Um, it's, that's obviously different, living there is different to actually going on holiday because you, you live with the people, you experience the actual lifestyle. And so many people have always kind of come back, found themselves coming back here and saying like the soul in Africa, there's just nothing like it anywhere else. Um, also people that have immigrated, I've the same thing they'll always say, like the, this, this vibrancy, this kind of passion that Africa and especially South Africa with our rich history kind of embodies is just something that people really miss when they leave here. I've never left South Africa really so I've, it's been years staying here and yeah I feel like you can't really settle unless I've seen more of the world and so mm, I'm on the hunt to travel and leave and see more and then decide well, I feel like we are in a state with, of like a lot of angst, political angst, and I think it's important that there is some antagonism like in a country in order for us to find a solution to that or a probable solution and then try and move forward to something because if there isn't a spark of something that makes people unhappy, then there isn't going to be something that's going to like fix it in some way. Yeah. Just, just jumping on you saying antagonisms over here, I was just thinking in terms of like the whole fees must fall kind of movement. and. Um, there's the fall, the play, I don't know if you guys have watched that, and it's pretty interesting in terms of how... Mm, it's now in London. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They've they got all these amazing awards and everything, and I think there's been a lot of things that maybe South Africa as a whole has exported or shown that it's willing to have these antagonisms, have some life over here, and it's been recognised elsewhere. So you might, like, in terms of protests and everything, I'd never seen a protest or been inside a protest until I got to Cape Town. Politically, I don't know, I've... I didn't, for a long period of time, I was always like, rah, rah, DA, yes, follow my parents, this is what my mom... And now I'm starting to think that ANC probably is the only party that can lead this country. They just have to change, and people have to help them change, you know? It's... They are such a pivotal point in our freedom, and were huge. And I just think it's become so corrupted but I don't know, and slowly EFF with time. Like... EFF, I don't know, they're a bit radical for me. I don't know. <laughs> ah, hectic. Yeah. I think it's very intimidating, you know, like when I'm asked that question, um, what are you going to do politically for this kind of, I mean, you do feel like a little ant, like yeah. you're like, what am, you know, what difference am I going to make? So I've been studying politics a bit and I'm always interested yes. in um, like three party states or four party states. And I think your parliamentary system, your electoral system really works when you've got three or four parties working. The EFF, I think is, yeah, definitely radical. You can look at its like recent history and say, this is something that if it had power, I don't think would be comfortable with it or it wouldn't be a good thing for South Africa necessarily. But at the same time, they have the power to hold the ANC to their own words in terms mm. of talking about the Freedom Charter. And oh, I think yes. I've seen a lot of friends who are, I would say, white and from a like a income bracket, vote strategically for EFF to give them that kind of ground, like oh, platform. So it's always yes. interesting the strategic like 
who we decide to vote. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been in conversations with people that I study with, I act with, of color, and it's got a bit heated. And once there was a mediator, and I said, I always, I said, look, I really feel uncomfortable getting into these political racial conversations because I always feel like it ends up somebody getting upset or someone getting flustered. And then Kezia, um, this um, one of my acting fellow actors, she was like, well, of course we're going to get flustered. Of course we're going to. If your forefathers had been slaves and you've been told the stories throughout your childhood of your family being oppressed, of course you're gonna like you're gonna have hate inside you, you know. Just because it hasn't been you've been affected, like your lineage, your heritage has been it's in you, it's ingrained in you. So there's this ingrained anger that's coming out and all these like splashes of violence, like burning the paintings at UCT and, you know. And looking at that objectively, no, that's not right. No, that's completely unacceptable. You can't burn art. Especially just going back to um, white guilt as such, um, I think it's really fundamental that it does come up and that people aren't reluctant to engage in a conversation that's essentially just become, that's going to become a full-blown argument because that is all part of the steps of growth to getting South Africa to be a better place to sort of wash away racism because if we're never going to address it it's really going to be difficult for all of us to get along with um, with all of the issues. Firstly I think you just you have to really understand your place in this country and who you are and what you represent and understand all the privilege that comes with it and then I don't know build on that it's the little daily things you do it's the people you greet in the streets and I don't know, it's that whole <laughs> be the change you want to be in the world, you know? Being a white person in this country, um, that I'm always very hesitant a lot of the time to get into those kind of conversations about politics, race, class, oh, yeah. very, very hesitant and anxious because I'm going to say the wrong thing or I'm go it's going to be taken the wrong way. Um, and I actually wish my sister was here. She's in matric. Um, <laughs> she is the most outspoken, like, political like person and it's it's so and she gets into a lot of arguments and fights and a lot of Facebook fights with people in her school mm. because she she feels like she is being discriminated against as a white person and instead of just kind of you know not saying anything and letting it slide and because it's the, because of the white guilt she'll actually stand up and say you know this is not right and um, what you're doing is not right. The way you're behaving, I feel like it's entitled. I feel, you know, she feels a lot of things. And I think I admire that because it opens conversation. And it's very evident that she's not a racist because if she was a racist, she wouldn't be saying anything. Yeah, well, I think it's, it's part of your own personal experience. And like Lara said, reverse racism. I mean, I must be honest, in my personal experience, I went to a school. I mean, I was, I'm a born free. I'm born after 1995. And um, being in school in KwaZulu Natal, I think majority, possibly even 50% of all the boys at my all boys school were blacks. And I did, in my own personal experience, experience a lot of racism against white people. And what could I call that? I could, uh, th there was nothing for me to ra rather be than just act nonchalant and blase about it and sort of ignore it. And um, even at my own workplace now, you know. What is it to say? Is it to say that it's racism or not right? What do you call that if um, there's a group of people at your work and obviously they're people of color and you can hear them talking or you just feel that there's something that they're being racist in some way towards you or they're making you feel uncomfortable or less or not part of the group, especially when you're outnumbered, what do you call that? Don't you think that's more like maybe exclusionary because you don't understand a certain culture or a certain language, you might feel excluded? I don't, do you feel particularly like oppressed in that situation? Because I feel like yeah. racism is more about feeling oppressed and I don't know if you feel like your experience is oppressive. I mean, I really don't even want to say some of the things, but for example, at work, at the workplace, being called a white pig just for simply interacting with some of the staff. You know, I've never really in the, in the restaurant that I'm at, um, back in the kitchen, just speaking to them, being really nice. And sometimes you feel like, um, you're really trying to go out of your way to sort of be a part and just um, or not even going out of your way You're just being yourself and for something like that to happen. What do you call it? Yeah. You know, do you ignore it? Do you put your thick skin on and just remember 
I've got white privilege, just forget about it. Is yeah. that the attitude I that mean, you I'm just sorry, have to have? But that is, those things that you've been called out is complete and utter racism. Like, I'm sorry. There's no other word for it, in my opinion. What, what is one to do anyway? Because are, if you're supposed to just have a thick skin and reserve all your judgments and keep quiet, does that just intend bottle all the emotions up and the result is something disgusting? Or do you face it? Do you talk about it? Or does that just cause a lot of conflict and um, unnecessary distress? I don't know. Don't you, like, I'm not trying to, like, diminish your experience at all because I feel like that is really rude and people shouldn't be calling, like, each other any names like that but do you think maybe like you go into this one particular space and you experience th these names in one particular space but those people maybe experience those names every day in every space and they've had to develop such a thick skin and sometimes people have a way of outlaying yeah, that anger in ways that aren't necessarily very nice but that's their daily experience as people of colour in this country. A lot of racism is inflicted on them mm. constantly. And you uh, maybe just feel like a tiny slice of that. So maybe that thick skin is just something that we have to put up with in our privilege. I understand the white guilt, but if you feel it so into, I, it will completely consume you. There are places where I worked and I'm at the back of the kitchen, you know, with staff and I'm the only white person there and I just... I get completely overcome because I sit there and I'm like watching these people. I'm like, guys, how how is this your salary? You can't survive like this. I can't survive like that. I'm 22. You have children. You have a family. And it's, I just, yeah. There, there comes a point where it's not, I don't know, it's not about the color. Yeah. I think it's interesting to... Um see now in terms of, yeah, 20 years after apartheid and this whole talk about white guilt. And I think it's interesting... At, at, at UCT, there's a talk about the white liberal stereotype, the person who always tries to put it on their, um, like on their barge of honor in that sense. But I think a lot of the conversations that need to be had about maybe positionality and stuff must never stop people from going out and trying to do things. There's, or you're always going to enter a situation and make a mistake. But I think a lot of times it's learning those mistakes. And I think maybe, you know, whether it's white guilt, whether it's privilege or anything like that, there's a lot of people, I think, that get... Um, they're, they're more willing to, to, to not try because they've seen people being taken out. No, I think it is. It is really easy to be consumed in, like, this, this guilt. Um, and especially just, like, yeah, if, if you have, like, an ounce of empathy in you, I think it's, it's pretty natural to see someone going through something tough and just know that you're better off and it has a lot to do with your skin colour. And I think it can be really difficult mm. to see that just every day. And it's... It's it's very blatant in South Africa. Like no, there's no covering it up. Like no. it, it's although it's very like divided. Like the city's very separate from the townships, but like it's there and it's heavy. My dream is to always be able to tell other people's stories, always do meaningful acting work, um, and give people voices that otherwise wouldn't be able to be heard. Um, my dream is to be a working artist and to be able to workshop with people who don't have access to the arts and to let them voice their own opinions in whatever medium suits them. My dream is to have successful businesses that will hopefully make a change in the future of South Africa. My dream is to be a good person and maybe help others be good too. My dream is to find um, a combination of the two things I love, conservation and international relations, and I want to lead to a career where I represent my country um, in terms of climate change action. Yeah, Z, you should ever sit and talk with people or else take a walk and create this they talk. Talk what is nice, it will make you feel stronger. Listen what is right and say what is wrong. You should ever sit and talk with people or else take a walk and create this they talk. Talk what is nice, it will make you feel stronger. Listen what is right and say what is wrong.